Hi, my name is Connie Jian. Last week, I spoke of how inflammation breeds disease and imbalance in our bodies, so much so that our internal thermostat breaks. I talked about how you can decrease the inflammation in your body by eating foods high in antioxidants, controlling your blood sugar levels, improving your metabolism by eating foods that are anti-inflammatory, and finally, eating the good fats such as avocados, nuts, seeds, and fish. And I, as I say this over and over again, I want to be the voice to dispel the myths and share the truths about health. There's so much information out there and the bombardment isn't helping our choices because most of us walk around so confused about what exactly to do. So today, I'll be talking about osteoporosis and what it is. I want to dispel the myths around it, share the truth, and give you insights on what you can do today to prevent this condition. So to start, osteoporosis is a bone disease that occurs when the body loses too much bone, makes too little bone, or both. As a result, bones become weak and porous. And it's like a serious problem because your bones may break from a fall, or in a serious case, even a sneezing or minor bump can break your bone. So why is bone fracture so important? Because one out of seven women who break a hip never makes it out of the hospital alive. And two out of seven women do not live independently after a hip fracture. So it's serious. And osteoporosis means porous bone. The density within the bone is significantly decreased. And as you can see, the difference in the picture, the density from a healthy bone compared to an osteoporotic bone, look at the difference. So what is the myth around the osteoporosis? The myth is that osteoporosis is a bone disease, when in fact, it's actually a collagen disease. Most of us equate calcium, specifically in milk, to healthy bones, but the stats are out. And after looking at 34 published studies in 16 countries, researchers at Yale University found that countries with the highest rates of osteoporosis, including the United States, Sweden, and Finland, are those in which people consume the most meat, milk, and other animal foods. So why is that? Well, the latest research shows that our bones need more than just calcium. Our bones need other vitamins and minerals, such as vitamin D, phosphorus, magnesium, collagen, and amino acids, which are protein. We also need ample amounts of vitamin C to build and protect the bone structure. To add to that, we need to be eating more alkaline foods, which are mostly vegetables. This is because vegetable sources have all the components, the protein, minerals, antioxidants, and vitamins. This helps to build bone. So we need a balance in our diet. Not too much protein, but protein with plenty of vegetables. There's so many secondary causes of osteoporosis. One primary one is inflammation. Inflammation from stress and lack of exercise. If you missed last week's video on inflammation, here's the link. Coming back to that topic of inflammation, inflammation plays a role as a secondary cause of osteoporosis. Remember, all disease is a result of inflammation. We need a better control. We need a better control of inflammation in order to have an optimal health. Women between the ages of 65 to 69 who break a hip are five times more likely to die within a year than women of the same age who don't break a hip. According to a Kaiser Permanente Center for Health Research study funded by the National Institute of Health and published online today in the Archives of Internal Medicine. So what can you do to prevent this happening to you? Number one is exercise. Studies show that 30 to 60 minutes of daily moderate exercise, anything from walking, gardening, or even dancing, or doing yoga, substantially reduces your risk for fractures. Play with a little bit of weights and strength training as well because that tug on the bone builds bone as well. And vitamin D. Get your levels checked today. 
and supplement as necessary. And also, take a good quality bone support supplement, which includes those minerals, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, amino acids, and a range of trace elements, which can help build bone. The disclaimer is that it's important to remember that dietary supplements cannot mitigate disease or replace drugs, but I believe they can definitely help you to stay healthier longer. Number three is antioxidants. While oxidative stress, the damage inflicted by free radicals in our body from the toxins, breaks bones down. Antioxidants can help neutralize the inflammation by disarming those free radicals. So eat lots of dark green vegetables, blueberries, and refer to the food list from last week's blog on my post as well. And lastly, it's optimal nutrient absorption. The supplements you take and healthy foods you eat won't do your body any good if you're not absorbing the nutrients. In fact, I tell my patients, don't bother getting your supplements if you're not going to be absorbing it. So a good place to start is to start with a probiotic to protect your gut, help the absorption, and help it to be more absorptive in the long run. So thank you so much for joining me again today, and see you next week.